Today's Buicks incorporate state-of-the-art advances in aerodynamic design. Smoothly rounded body lines and flush fitting glass provide much more than just an attractive appearance. The smooth body surfaces reduce the amount of friction and turbulence produced by the car as it pushes through the surrounding air. As a result, the car uses less fuel to overcome air resistance. Also, the body produces less wind noise than earlier designs. Indeed, for many, one of the more attractive benefits of owning a luxury Buick sedan is the isolation it provides from exterior noises. Ironically, for the very reason that the cars are so quiet, small noises may become more noticeable. Noises that may not have been apparent in a car with an older, less aerodynamic design. And even a seemingly minor wind noise problem can seriously undermine an owner's feelings of confidence in the quality of the car. People often hear noises differently. What seems like an unusual or excessive amount of noise to one person may seem normal to another. For this reason, clear communication with the customer is extremely important in order to ensure the customer's complaint is properly understood and avoid possible comebacks. A customer comment worksheet is particularly useful. With complaints of this nature, complaints that aren't always clearly defined, the worksheet helps the customer describe the condition using terms the service department can relate to. Once the preliminary information has been obtained, the first task of the service department is to verify that an objectionable and repairable wind noise condition exists. Occasionally, a reported noise may actually be the result of normal wind movement around a properly aligned portion of the car, a condition that cannot be repaired. A road test is clearly the best way to verify a problem, preferably with the customer driving. The customer should be asked to try and recreate the driving conditions under which the noise is usually heard. When a wind noise condition is verified during the road test, the noise type and the apparent source should be noted on the customer comment sheet or repair order. For diagnostic purposes, vehicle body engineers classify wind noise into general types. Wind rush is the noise produced by outside air passing over or through an opening, like the noise heard when a car window is opened while traveling at highway speed. Wind leaks produce a high-pitched sound, usually caused by pressurized air leaking from the inside of the car to the outside. Wind whistle, a high-pitched tea kettle sound, is sometimes produced by small leaks or on the exterior by wind blowing through small openings, such as around the grill or headlamps. As a car travels along a highway, some outside air is diverted below the windshield and enters the car through the ventilation system. As the air enters, pressure in the car interior increases considerably. Pressurized air exits by way of the air exhaust outlets in the rear door lock pillars. If there are any leaks at the weather seals around the perimeter of the glass or in the door seals, pressurized interior air will quickly find the exit and produce a whistle noise as it escapes. When the noise type and its general location are noted, the next job is to pinpoint the exact location and cause of the noise so repairs can be made. Begin with a visual inspection of the general area where the noise originates. Look for any loose or misaligned body panels or trim. As you might expect, the majority of reported wind noise conditions occur around the windshield and door glass. An effective tool for pinpointing the source of a noise around the glass is a mechanics stethoscope with a 48-inch piece of flexible hose attached. With a helper driving the car for safety, the flexible hose can be used to listen for noise sources around the perimeter of the windshield while traveling at highway speed. Other listening places are around the windows and fixed door glass. 
and along the glass at the inner belt line. When listening around the door, primary seals, keep in mind that it is normal to hear very localized high-level noises that are produced by the vent holes in the seal. In this know-how, we'll examine the causes and repair procedures for the most commonly reported wind noise conditions on 1991 and newer Park Avenue and Park Avenue Ultra models, and also 1992 and later Le Sabre models. Moderate to severe wind leak noises heard around the perimeter of the windshield may be the result of small leaks in the windshield urethane seal. One method of pinpointing leaks is to tape over the car's rear pillar pressure relief valves. Then, with all windows rolled up, run the car's ventilation fan at full speed. A stethoscope can then be used to listen for escaping air pressure around the seals. The exact location of the leak can also be pinpointed using an ultrasonic tester or an electronic listening tool like the one shown. With either method, when the location of the windshield perimeter leak is identified, remove the molding in the area of the leak. Then, flood the area with a urethane sealant. Cover the area surrounding the leak with enough sealer to avoid creating a new leak path. For leaks that occur along the bottom of the windshield, a thin nozzle or piece of copper tubing can be used to apply sealer under the bottom edge of the glass. A wind rush noise can be produced by any gapping between the rear sealing lip of the windshield upper reveal molding and the surface of the roof. Gapping here of as little as two-tenths of a millimeter, that's less than the thickness of a playing card, can produce a significant level of wind rush noise. To check if gapping here is causing a rush noise, cover the entire upper molding from pillar to pillar with two-inch duct tape. Then, road test to see if the noise is significantly reduced by the tape. If the noise is reduced with the tape in place, the gapping condition can be remedied by using a sealing material such as this clear double-sided adhesive tape to close the gap. Do not use quick setting super glue to seal the gap. It may react with and damage both the PVC material of the molding and the body paint. If the gap cannot be repaired using tape or the molding is damaged in the process of the repair, replace the upper reveal molding. Moderate levels of wind rush noise may also be caused by gapping between the soft lip of the windshield side reveal molding and the surface of the windshield. Wind rush due to gapping at the molding can best be verified by covering the molding with masking tape and performing a road test. If there is gapping, the tape considerably reduces the noise level. If the road test confirms gapping as the source of the rush, remove the molding strip. Then carefully reform it by hand so that the sealing lip fits tightly against the glass. Be careful not to damage the molding by overbending. In some cases, strong wind noises may be heard at several points along the inner door belt line. Occasionally, this condition may be caused by missing factory-installed sealer material at the front or rear belt line of the door. A clear filler can be used to cover any voids in the factory sealer. When noises of the same intensity are heard at all of the locations indicated here, the most likely cause is an incorrect fit between the door outer weather strip and the surface of the door. Check that the weather seal is properly seated and the outer sealing lip is fully compressed against the door surface. If it cannot be pressed into the proper position, carefully remove the weather seal assembly from the door. Inspect the weather seal clip tangs and correct any that are misaligned.
Then, carefully reinstall the seal assembly by first aligning the rear edge of the strip to the rear edge of the door. Engage the clips into the slots on the door panel, and starting with the front clip, work rearward to install the seal in position. Wind leak noise may be heard around the perimeter of the door windows or dropping glass, as it is sometimes called. To provide a proper seal, the edge of the glass run channel must extend fully around the glass so that the entire outer sealing lip is in full contact with the glass surface. The correct positioning of the run channel seal is referred to as a full winkover condition. There must be a full winkover of the sealing strip along the front door division post and door header and the rear door applique and the door header. A very localized leak at the door glass run channel may be caused by a part discrepancy in either the glass itself or by hard spots on the glass run channel. It is often possible to minimize glass irregularities by repositioning and adjusting the door glass to improve its fit against the run channel. It is also often possible to correct misaligned trim without removing or replacing parts. Strong wind noise heard at the inner belt line in only the locations indicated are usually caused by missing foam patches. To repair this condition, carefully stuff small patches of soft foam in the opening between the inner belt weather seal strip, the door garnish moldings, and the interior trim pad. Intense rush noises from these two areas are most frequently caused by incorrect positioning of the rubber grommet inside the outside rearview mirror housing. Use a shop light to check behind the mirror. If the grommet is sitting too high or pushed in too far, remove the rearview mirror and reposition the grommet so that it is correctly installed. Also check the interior belt line trim panel for proper alignment at the division post. A high frequency leak noise may occur at the top or bottom of the division post at the front vent window. This may be the result of a leak in the urethane seal that extends from the top of the division post down to the belt. To close out the leak pathway, pack small amounts of thumb grade type sealer between the glass surface and the door garnish molding. A moderate wind rush noise may be heard at the front top corner of the windshield. This may be caused by gapping along the rubber auxiliary lip of the front glass run channel at the windshield front pillar. The most sensitive spot for this condition is the triangular area at the top of the windshield pillar between the windshield side reveal molding, the upper reveal molding, and the roof drip rail. The repair for this wind rush condition is to remove and reposition the glass run channel. It may be possible to reposition the glass run channel by cleaning the door surface with alcohol and using the existing adhesive strip. If the run channel cannot be repositioned using the existing adhesive in this way, carefully remove the adhesive strip. Apply a length of double-faced adhesive tape to securely reattach the run channel to the door frame. Carefully position the run channel so that the auxiliary lip is pulled further into the door opening. In some cases, repositioning the run channel may not repair this condition. It may then be necessary to adjust the door fit to eliminate the wind rush noise. A high level of wind rush noise at the front pillar from the base to the roof may sometimes originate inside the pillar itself. To confirm the noise is coming from inside the pillar, cover the windshield side reveal molding and its mating surface on the windshield and the door glass run channel with duct tape. Then road test the car to see if there is an improvement in noise level with the tape in place. If there is no improvement in noise level with the tape in place, 
The cause may be a leak in the expanded foam plug that seals the base of the pillar. Remove the front pillar garnish molding to reveal the bottom slotted hole of the pillar. Use this hole to fill the lower quarter area of the pillar with foam. Use a spray type double expanding polyurethane foam. This material is available from building supply outlets and hardware stores. This foam must be handled very cautiously so it does not come in contact with paint and other parts. Be careful not to overfill the pillar. Keep in mind that this foam more than doubles in volume as it cures. To get a feel for how this foam acts, it's a good idea to experiment by squirting a small amount onto a scrap of cardboard or a paper towel. Cover the hole with a piece of tape until the foam has finished curing. Leak noise may occur around the perimeter of the doors. There must be full contact between the rubber primary seal bulb and the door sealing surface with a 30 to 50 percent compression of the bulb. Keep in mind that because of the upper seal design on the glass run channel, the normal dollar bill test is not effective on these cars. Gaps in the door seal can be located by spraying tracing powder or applying chalk around the surface of the suspected door seal. Then close the door firmly without slamming. When the door is reopened, any gaps of one-eighth of an inch or larger in the powder should be considered leak areas. Check especially in corners, that's where problems most often occur. If there is incorrect seal contact due to misalignment of the seal with the door surface, pull the entire seal off the body flange. To reinstall, position the weather seal joint in the center of the rocker panel and install the seal on the flange, working in one direction. Continue around the door opening. Be sure the weather seal is seated securely on the flange, particularly in the corners. Go back over the entire perimeter once more to ensure the weather seal has remained securely seated during installation. Very occasionally, a leak noise may be the result of too much gap between the door and the body. The doors should be adjusted inward. In the unlikely event that a door needs adjustment, be careful to move the door inward only as much as necessary to obtain a proper seal. Otherwise, the door may be difficult to open. Leak noise similar to that at the windshield perimeter may occur around the backlight. Pinpoint the exact leak area with a stethoscope as for the windshield perimeter leak. The backlight leak is repaired by carefully applying urethane sealer on the interior side of the glass. Labor time guide operation numbers for the repairs covered in this know-how are described in Dealer Service Bulletin 92-10-50. After repairs are made and before returning a car to the owner, road test the car to check that the noise condition is cured. Again, the road test should recreate as much as possible the conditions under which the noise was originally verified. However, bear in mind that wind noises are naturally affected by weather conditions. A noise that was obvious when testing the car on a gusty day may not occur on a calm day. While wind noise repairs can be tricky, a successful repair can greatly enhance an owner's confidence in his or her Buick and your dealership.